Well, hello everyone. I've got to do one thing here. Technical difficulties, I apologize. Um, thank you for joining us tonight for Senior Scholarships 101. Um, my name is Angie Anthony and I'm the Director of Scholarships at the Hillsborough Education Foundation. And um, thank you for spending your time with us tonight. We are going to be recording this webinar, so don't feel like you have to take frantic notes. It'll be posted on our website um, within a few days, and you'll be able to reference it. We're also going to post any uh, questions that come up in the chat. You should be able to post questions in the chat to me, and um, we'll address those as we can on the call. Anything that we don't get to tonight, we will uh, also post on our website. So let's begin. The first thing I want to share with you uh, are, are our learning objectives. We're going to discuss scholarship criteria and eligibility, um, a couple of different types of scholarships and some examples. We're going to do a deep dive into the application process and familiarize you with the review and award process. But first, a little bit about our uh, foundation, the Hillsboro Education Foundation. We believe strengthening public education builds a better community, and we believe that public school success is vital to our county's prosperity. And we also believe that a community engaged in making educational excellence a priority will transform Hillsboro County. And you're going to see that community engagement in our scholarship program with all of the wonderful donors that we have um, who uh, generously give to educate our youth and set them on the path to success. So if you're on this call, you're either a senior and your senior year is here faster than you ever expected it to be and you're planning your next steps or you might be a parent or guardian and you just can't believe the years have flown by and your child is headed off to college soon. Either way, let's dive into talking about scholarships. So let's talk about where we've been first. I wanna set the stage a little bit with last year, we awarded over 220 scholarships. They ranged from $500 all the way up to, uh, one award was $40,000 and um, we did have some four-year University Florida prepaid plans that were given. What did that total? $645,000 worth of scholarships awarded to students in Hillsborough County. So this year is shaping up to be no different and might even be better. The uh, scholarships and donors are still coming in and um, we, we always hope for a bigger and better year. So Moving to the next step, where does that money come from? Well, we have donors. Um, the donors come from all different walks of life. Uh, we have individuals and families who give, uh, sometimes as a gift in honor of someone or in memory of someone who's passed. Um, we also are given endowments. And in those cases, we are able to uh, distribute the earnings that those funds accrue as scholarships. But it's not just individuals. We also have companies like the Outback and a company called the Industrial Company. They actually give trade school scholarships. So we do have some, um, actually a fair amount, that uh, students can attend a technical college and learn a skill like welding um, or construction. Uh, we have a host of nonprofit organizations in the community that are um, very busy earning and fundraising all year long. Um, Kiwanis is one of them. We also have some sorority and alumni groups. We have the Derek Jeter Turn 2 Foundation and some Gasparilla Cruz. 
And these are just some examples for you. I just wanted you to familiarize you with where does the money come from? Um, we, we have a, a great many donors. So moving on, you're probably wondering about eligibility. Could I qualify for a scholarship? Well, if you're a senior in Hillsborough County right now, I would say you absolutely need to apply. All seniors should be applying um, with our foundation because each of the criteria have different, um, each of the scholarships have different criteria that we match students to. We accept students from public schools, and that includes if you're attending a charter school or you're in virtual school, homeschool and private schools, we do have scholarships for you as well. So please make sure you apply. These are some examples of the types of criteria that you will see in our uh, offerings. Um, we use the unweighted GPA. So on your report card, that's your cumulative state GPA. It's the one that is 4.0 or lower. It's your unweighted. Um, so donors decide their own criteria and they may have set a minimum GPA or not. Uh, they may suggest that they would like the student to be attending a traditional university or a community college or a trade school, technical college. They may be based on major or what high school you're currently attending. They may include some requirements for community service or extracurricular activities. And we also have some that are financial need based. Um, it can be any combination of these things. So um, let's talk a little bit about the financial need. That's always a big question. What it, how is that defined? So we define it as um, the household qualifying for a social assistance program. And it would be something that fits into one of these categories uh, either you qualify for free or reduced lunch, and that would need to be supported by a copy of your uh, household's 1040 tax form, um, because a lot of the schools are receiving free and reduced lunch as a carryover from, um, from COVID, actually. So uh, not all schools are categor categorizing students' eligibility based on income right now. So we're using what those qualification incomes were. Uh, then um, if you qualify for Medicaid, TAMP, WIC, SNAP, or housing assistance, and we'll talk a little more about documentation for that coming up um, right now. <laughs> so documentation will be required. You have the option to upload it with your application. I strongly recommend you go ahead and get it out of the way while you have time to, to do so. The application opened today and will be open through January 31st. So you've got lots of time to dig up some documentation. Um, and you will see if you qualify, it will specifically only ask you for documentation on your financial need if you have indicated that you qualify for one of the above programs. Um, otherwise, we would ask you for the documentation if you were pre-awarded. So let's say you didn't upload the documentation, but after the reviews are done, you are the top scored student, then we would reach out and say, we need the documentation and we need it within two weeks. So that's kind of tight. I always vote for don't leave things to the last minute, upload it at the beginning. And then you know what, come, come February, you won't have to worry about hearing from me. Um, you'll only get to hear whether or not you received the uh, scholarship. So the next thing I want to discuss is the scholarships themselves. Um, the, uh, as I kind of indicated, the they can be for traditional colleges or universities, for community colleges, technical college or trade school. They vary. I will say most of them are one year um, awards, but some are multi year that are two or four years. Uh, in those cases, we would require an annual um, update from the student 
And a couple of them are conditional, meaning you would have to maintain a certain GPA in order to get the next year's payout. Um, and again, our scholarships this year, uh, as of right now, are running from $500 to $40,000, $500 to $40,000, and um, a four-year university um, prepaid plan. So here's some examples. I'm sure you're excited to hear about well, what do we actually have? This is one of our Kiwanis scholarships. It's uh, in the name of Arthur Henderson Memorial Scholarship. And you can see the criteria. It has a minimum GPA, unweighted GPA of 3.25. It does require financial need be demonstrated. Uh, they want the awardee to have performed at least 75 hours of community service work. And there are two additional essays. I'm gonna pause here a little bit on the essays. So um, the way our application works, it's one main application. You're just gonna fill out all the questions and it's gonna ask you for extra things if you qualified based on the other criteria. So in this case, you would only be asked to do those extra essays if you met the criteria above where my third, my fourth bullet point. And then the, um, the Kiwanis Club has a preference for students majoring in education or uh, early childhood preschool education development. Um, that is not a requirement, that is a preference. Here's another scholarship. Uh, this is the Braulio and Adelpha Alonzo Scholarship. And this is all the criteria is. It's simply looking for a senior who plans to attend a college or university. So as far as I'm concerned, everybody at Alonzo should be on our website and applying for scholarships because this is available. Uh, my next example is one that's for a trade school. So the Outback Steakhouse, as I already mentioned, they have uh, a scholarship. They ask for a minimum unweighted GPA of 3.0, and then the student must attend a higher education culinary program. So um, certainly we, we have plenty for trade schools. And the next topic is the actual application itself. So you're probably wondering what does that look like? I'm, I'm going to show you what it looks like. The biggest thing I want to tell you is don't dread it. It's really a pretty easy application. It's pretty simple. We're going to walk through it step by step in this presentation. And if I happen to be going too fast for you, this is being recorded. So you'll be able to reference this uh, later when you're actually filling out the application. And if you have any questions even further, by all means, please just give me a call or send me an email. I'm happy to help you. So you've got to apply to get any money. Um, the application period started today and it's running through January 31st of 2024 and the window, uh, the application will close at midnight. So please don't wait until the last minute. Um, I wanted to give you some context as to about how many students apply. So I put some numbers here from last year. So we saw almost 2,200 students begin the application but only about half of them finished it. So I will say, if you don't finish the application, you are not qualified for any of the scholarships. So you've got to finish the application. Um, and let's tell you a little more about it. We use an online platform called AwardSpring. You're going to, I'm gonna show you the link to get to the, uh, to the platform, but you go through our website. As I mentioned, it's one general application. The general application has the two required essays, but again, while there are more um, essays that may required, the only time you're going to see those is when it's a scholarship you have qualified for. So um, it's really important to do those. Most of them ask for 250 words, which is really just a big paragraph, so it's not a lot. Um, there are four sections to it, and uh, they're laid out here. We have student information, which um, is really just all about you. What school are you going to? 
Um, what uh, extracurricular activities are you involved in? What's your GPA? What other uh, activities do you do? How many community service hours have you worked? Um, so it asks you those types of questions. The second section is what your post-secondary school and future plans are. So basically, we want to know what are you planning to do when you um, graduate and what are your school plans? The third section is a household and financial information. I would say uh, it's, it's often useful to have a parent or guardian assist you with this section um, because there may be questions that are important to answer correctly and that can impact what you qualify for. So try to make sure you're getting the right answers and not guessing on things. Um, if you can't get help from a parent or guardian, maybe ask somebody at school if you have some questions on that page. Uh, and the last, the last section is acknowledgements and authorizations, which is really just kind of like terms of service, where it's all bullet points for you to read through and um, acknowledge and authorize half with your uh, information. We do ask that if you are under 18, you have a parent or guardian do the sign off on that particular section. Otherwise, if you're over 18, please enter your own information and the instructions will remind you of this. So getting to the application, you are going to go to our website, educationfoundation.com slash senior scholarships, and you will see um, just I have a little bit of the screenshot right here and where you're going to click as is circled in red, submit your application. Once you click on submit your application from our website, the screen is going to look like this and you've now begun in award spring. You do need to register by clicking on register on the left and please do use the student's email um, and set up a password and uh, then it, it will um, go ahead and let you sign in from here. When you sign in, you are going to see a screen that looks like this. And um, I entered myself as a mock student for these screenshots. So that's why it says, welcome, Angie. And you can see on the left that dashboard is highlighted in a light blue. So it's going to have um, landed you on the dashboard and you're going to need to click on application or complete to begin the application. Once you get into the application, you're going to see the sections that I mentioned. And I have the first one um, highlighted, or not highlighted, but circled. So it's student information. And you can see a little bit to the uh, right of the circle. It's a little bit of the instructions. And this is, uh, you'll scroll through the page. There's a lot, a lot of questions on this page. Um, but what I did here is I took a little snippet from the bottom where you can see when you, whoops, sorry, I advanced. Did I go forward or backwards? I'm sorry. When you get to the bottom of the uh, student information page and really all of these four sections, you'll have the options to go to the previous step, which is the section, or the next step, which I circled here. Uh, to take you to the next section. And you can see over at the bottom right of the slide here that submit application is gray. It's not going to let you submit it until everything's complete. The system will save as you go. So as you're answering questions, it's behind the scenes saving your answers. So um, I'm going to pretend we're clicking next step. And this is what it would look like when I'm actually on the post-secondary school and future plan section. And you can see that it's showing me the student information is in progress. So you're going to see that, that your sections are completed or in progress. Um, and when you're done with every section, it's going to look like this it's going to tell you that they're completed when you're done with the general application. 
And remember the submit application on the bottom right was gray. Now, because the application is complete, we can hit submit application. You can always come back if you need to make changes later. So please don't worry about submitting that. Better to submit it and come back um, than to have missed submitting it at all. If you do need to return to make some changes, or since you're on the call, you're going to get the heads up on this. Sometimes I get scholarships um, added a little further into the year. So you may get an email from me that says, guess what? There's more questions. You qualified for something I just added and um, we need you to go back and uh, answer those additional questions. So you would go in, answer the additional questions and again, hit submit application. So what happens after you submit application? Well, it takes you back to the dashboard, but now the dashboard looks a little differently. So if you'll remember, I mentioned you might be asked to do some additional essays or the financial need documentation is only going to be asked of those who um, qualify for a scholarship that requires financial need if the student indicates that indicated that they participate, the household qualifies for one of those social assistance programs. So that would be, um, there are really just the three instances of why your dashboard would look like this, where it's showing you now some scholarships um, that it's telling you there's 11 items to complete. So there might be more to do here. Um, you can see it's confirming that the application was completed, uh, submitted under Welcome Angie, but there's extra work to be done. So you've qualified for these 11 scholarships, but they have just a few more steps for you to do. And it's worth it to take your time to do these. So what does it look like when you click on one of those complete work buttons? Well, it takes you to the specific scholarship page. So it's going to show you a little bit of an overview about the scholarship. Uh, it's going to tell you what you need to do. Um, in this case, it was an additional essay. It also shows you the qualifications and you see the little check marks. So it's just showing you you qualified for the, you met the, these criteria and therefore we're asking you to do this next step. So you will need to um, type in your answers here and then hit submit application. At that point, it takes you back to the dashboard because it, it knows, well, whether you have more work to do or not, um, it always takes you back there. And when you're done with all of those extra items, this is what the dashboard's going to look like. So it's gonna be very clear. Your application was submitted. Thank you, nothing left to complete. And that is pretty much the application. So you're probably wondering, well, where are the scholarships? So I wanna show you that next. So you would be um, from here, you can see under dashboard, there's an option for scholarships. So if we clicked on that, it would show us this screen. So this screen shows all of the scholarships that we have offered and it shows you your status. So um, for example, I, I left this one because I, I wanted to show you that if you skipped ahead to scholarships and you haven't completed all your follow-up, if you notice under the status column, there's a big yellow button that says complete follow-up. So it's cluing you in, you've, you've got something extra to do. At this point in the application process, the only statuses you will see is whether you applied, um, you did not qualify, or you have something extra to do. Um, remember that when you click, that, excuse me, I haven't shown you that yet, I apologize. So let's, let's say um, I, I circled here the Bay Area Manufacturers Association Scholarship in this particular case, it shows that that I did apply for it. But whether I did or didn't, I, I take that with you as I show you what happens when I click on the actual scholarship. 
So it shows me the overview and what the qualifications are. Sometimes um, it may show you as not qualified. This is where if you think you were qualified, come back, look at these qualifications and make sure that your answers indicate um, a, a accordingly to meet these. If you have any questions, give me a call and um, I can certainly track that down for you. We also have a list of um, all of the scholarships that will be posted in the next few days to our scholarship. It's downloadable, it's something you can print, um, and, it, and it shows all of these qualifications. So that's gonna be posted soon um, as another tool that, that you can look at to see what we have available. And really that is the application um, process in a nutshell. So what happens after January 31st? Well, we get busy doing reviews. And to tell you a little bit about the review process, um, who does the reviews? Well, some are the donors themselves. We have uh, family, family donors who get together and review um, applications and they score accordingly. There is a, a standardized way that we do the scoring. Um, organizations have review committees and they may get together or they may just do the scoring online. Um, and no matter who it is, every application is reviewed by a minimum of three reviewers. So there's no one person that says yes or no to whether or not someone gets a scholarship. They all get scored and then it's the student that has ranked the highest. Um, what happens if a donor doesn't want to um, do the, uh, the evaluations and the reviews of the application? There are some that don't. So we have a couple of hundred volunteers who uh, volunteer their time and review many, many scholarships. You can imagine the um, almost 1,200 applications that I told you we received that are reviewed at least three times. Um, each reviewer signs a conflict of interest. So in the event they they somehow figured out they they knew you or they knew somebody, um, we we do have a policy and we uh, would ask them to step aside from reviewing and we would replace them. Information that the reviewers do not see are your name, contact information, the financial need information, race, ethnicity, gender. And going back to the financial need information, um, when the reviewers see the applications, they already know that you qualified. We as HEF at, at Hillsborough Education Foundation, we do the work on that end, but they just need to know that you met the qualifications. They don't need the details. So what things do those reviewers look at? They look at that unweighted GPA. Uh, what extracurricular activities you were involved in, and did you demonstrate leadership? They evaluate community service hours and the content of the essays. That is where the bulk of the scoring points are. So very important that those essays are um, thorough and well thought out. And please, 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 grammar and spell check. I really recommend that you write your essays in something like Word, where you can do a grammar and spell check and then copy and paste your content into the, um, into the system. They also, the reviewers also look at employment hours and you know they recognize, we recognize that some students um, may not have as many community service hours or participate in as many extracurricular activities because they have to work and any combination of those three. So extracurricular, community service, employment, it's, it's all um, taken into consideration. The reviews are usually done by mid-March and then we start the award process. So now remember your scholarship screen um, in award spring. It's gonna change a little bit. So now the choices for the statuses could be applied, not applied, not qualified, awarded, or denied. 
And I added one that shows awarded. So you can see what that looks like. Um, not applied. What's that? You thought you applied. Not applied is going to come up if there was extra work to do and it wasn't done. Because effectively, if, there, if that's not done, then that application for that particular scholarship did not go through. As you can see, it displays the amount that's awarded. Um, you will not see that you are awarded if you are um, in, in the pre-award status and we are waiting for financial need documents. That will not show. These get populated um, pretty much in April. I would expect to start seeing these and you will also uh, be receiving an email. So I'm getting ahead of myself. In mid-April, you should have an email that uh, if you're awarded, looks like this one. Um, it's an automated email that comes through the awards award spring um, system. And you can also check your dashboard. If you're awarded, it'll show you on the dashboard as well. Once you are an awarded student, you will be sent a packet through the mail. So you, we're going to notify you through email. There's definitely notification in the system that you can check, and then you will be sent a packet in the mail. We generally don't get those packets out until about June. Um, in that packet, it's going to tell you everything you need to know about how to claim your funds. And really, that's just boils down to three things. We ask for an enrollment verification form that demonstrates that you are uh, enrolled in college and it provides us with the information we need for the college. We have a information release form that we ask you to complete. There's no obligation to authorize us. We just ask you to complete the form. We do like to use quotes and um, in our social media uh, and press releases from the thank you letter to the donor that you're going to write and submit, uh, which is the third thing. And we will get the letter to the donor. We then issue the check. It will be sent to your school and can be used for tuition, books, fees, housing, and meal plans. Any students that are awarded need to claim their funds by February 28th of 2025. So not this coming February, but the next one. So that would be your spring term in college, um, 2025. And that is the awards. So next I just have some helpful hints, things that I've seen students do along the way that um, are things I wanna share with you uh, to help you through. So the biggest thing, please read the instructions and the questions carefully. Make sure you're using your unweighted GPA. Again, on your report card, this is your cumulative state GPA. Review the answer choices carefully. So uh, essentially pick the right answer to the question. Um, simple example I'm going to give you. If you picked the wrong school and you attend Alonzo High School, remember the scholarship I showed you for Alonzo students, you won't qualify because you picked the wrong school. So it's very important that you choose your answers carefully. Select all of the extracurricular activities that apply. This is a big spot for, um, for you to be careful because Many of those extracurricular activities are tied directly to qualifications for scholarships. So let's use, for example, basketball. If you play basketball and I happen to have a scholarship for basketball players and you didn't select basketball in the drop down for the extracurricular activities, but you included it in your essay because you started thinking about all these other things you do when you were writing your essay. You're not going to qualify because the system is triggered from what's in the drop down, not in the essays. So just make sure that you um, pick everything. I don't want you to miss out on any scholarships. When you're doing the uh, answering the essay questions, make sure you're act actually answering the question that's asked and stay on topic. 
Remember the word count. Most of them have a word count about 250 words. It's a large paragraph. This is your highest scoring point area and spelling and grammar counts. Yes, there's points attached to spelling and grammar. And again, I'll say, please place it in Word and then do a copy and paste. Don't wait till the last minute. Inevitably, something happens to someone's computer at nearly midnight on January 31st every year. And the cutoff is January 31st. So you've got four months to fill out your application. And remember that submit application button. I know it sounds silly, but don't forget to hit submit. So some important dates. As you know, this application opened today. It's going to close in January, January 31st at midnight. And then mid-April, beginning of May, we're doing notifications. And this, I just want to share some quotes with you. Um, like I mentioned with the uh, thank you letters for donors, these are some tidbits that came from students. And um, uh, I'll let you read that. I'm actually opening the Q&A. I see a question here. Does the HEF scholarship application save automatically if the student doesn't complete the application the same day? Yes, yes, it saves it. So it saves as you go. So you, you should be fine. Um, and if anybody else has any questions, please add them to the chat. Um, and I'm going to advance to uh, the slide that has my contact information. It is on the webinar, uh, on our website as well. Um, but this is how you can reach me. And I really hope this has been informative. I am looking in the chat and the Q&A. Here comes another question. Okay, does it have a softball scholarship or any scholarship related to science? I do have some science related scholarships, absolutely. Um, and not one that's particular for softball, although um, I, I think I have one that has, mm -mm, actually it's volleyball I'm thinking of, there's a preference, no, on, on softball, but yes, on science and STEM. Um, okay, so uh, we have another question. I came in late. Where can I find the application? The application is on our website, educationfoundation.com slash senior scholarships. And you'll see a link to, um, to our uh, application from there. And since you came in late, just want to make sure you know this is being recorded and will be posted to our website. Um, you'll be able to uh, um, see the recording and uh, on there and catch up from there. Next question, do you have a scholarship for audiology? I do not have one specific for audiology. However, I have some healthcare um, scholarships. And um, Ms. Trinity, you're going to see on the application where there isn't a, a, a special um, there's a question that asks what you plan to major in and audiology is not one of the choices. So what you need to do is pick healthcare and then you can also select other under major. You can pick more than one, pick other, and you can put your, your specifics for audiology there, but we have, um, several that are for healthcare. So definitely have funding for you. Um, another question, do you also help students with scholarship applications like Bright Futures? Um, I have not assisted, however, we have a program called SCOPE at um, King High School. And if your student or you attend King, there are resources available for you there. I also would say if you need Bright Futures assistance, um, check in with your guidance counselor. They uh, may be able to assist you. Um, I've got another question. My child will be done by winter break, but he's technically a junior. He plans on going to HCC in January. Will the expenses be able to reimburse previous, previous expenses? Unfortunately not. Um, that's a very good question and congratulations to him um, or him. Um, but he can still apply. 
So that can certainly assist him with the future expenses. We have another question asking if there's a scholarship for physical therapy. Um, not specifically, but I'm going to reiterate my, my um, answer about selecting health care. So you can always select health care and then select other as well, and you can indicate your specifics. Second part of that question is, do, do all of the scholarships have to specify a future career? Not necessarily a career. Um, they're asking what you want to major in. So certainly liberal arts is out there and um, all kinds of different topics that are not necessarily a specific career, um, but would open the doors to you for many careers. Next question, are students eligible to be awarded for more than one scholarship? That's a yes. Uh, next question. My sister does not attend King's, but guidance counselor is very busy. Oh, dear. Um, the person asking this question that doesn't go to King's, if you email me offline, um, I will look into some other resources for you. I have a couple of things in mind, but I, I don't want to list their names um, uh, on our on our webinar because I'm just not sure. Uh, and I can uh, work with you separately. We'll we'll do what we can to get you some help, okay? Next question. Oh, I think it's the same person. She attends plant but doesn't know how to apply. That's okay. We'll we'll get you help. Um, do community service hours have to be documented via Bright Futures or is there another way to document the service hours? Um, we are not asking for documentation at this time. We do ask that the uh, hours be what you have already performed, not what you've projected. And so they do not need to be documented via Bright Futures or a specific way. We're going to ask you that in the content of the um, actual application. And if there's any other questions, keep them coming. I'll give us a couple of minutes. That was my presentation. Um, I'm so happy that you've been able to join us and, and I'm so excited for this year. Uh, and just reiterate, please contact me if you have any questions along the way. This is what I do and I am just so excited for you guys and certainly wanna see you get all the funding you need for school. Oh, I think we've got one more, here we go. Do these scholarships go to specific schools or is it any that we would like to attend? They vary. So there are some scholarships that do specify. Um, for example, I have a scholarship specific to Georgia Tech and I have a healthcare scholarship specific to USF. But I would say the majority of them allow you to go where you want within certain parameters. Some specify trade school, some specify four-year university, and some don't specify anything at all. We have about a um, hundred what I call named scholarships. So uh, if you recall, I showed you the um, scholarships tab where you can see the list of scholarships. And I also told you we will be posting a list with the criteria. There's about 100 on there. And within that 100, sometimes there are multiples. So it has one name, but there may be several of those awards. Several students may receive it. Um, you'll be able to see all of the specifics on that. So that'll be a, a good tool for you. And um, I'm again going to say really everybody should be applying. We have so many with um, such varied criteria. I really can't think of a student who shouldn't be applying. We have, scholar we have um, scholarships with lower GPAs, no GPAs, specific schools, no specific schools. I see the next question is, do students have to attend a Florida school? It depends on the scholarship, but the bulk of them, no. Uh, next question. My child was fostered and later adopted by me and my husband, so he gets Medicaid and free lunch. Any idea how that affects his financial need? That, um, with him receiving Medicaid, 
uh, that would be your best route to upload for uh, qualifying for financial need. Medicaid is one of the social assistance programs that is a qualifier, and we would absolutely accept that. So he needs to apply. All right, I got another question. Okay, let's say you got the scholarship money. Where does it go directly? It goes directly to the school. And the schools, what they typically do, it depends on the school, but they typically will apply it to your account. And um, from there, the uh, some, some schools will divide it between the fall and the spring session. So um, good question and things to keep in mind. So we've got Rebecca just asked a really good question out of the 100 and 100, excuse me, 1,165 completed applications last year, how many actually received a scholarship? We awarded over 220 awards. Um, it, some students, as I already indicated, uh, we do allow multiple awards. So some students received more than one. So um, I can't say that it was over 220 students, but it was close. It's not like somebody came in and got 100 of them. Um, you know, some students may get more than one. Uh, another good question, does HEF scholarship require a letter of recommendation? If so, who should students ask their letter for their letter of recommendation? Um, there are two specific scholarships right now that ask for letters of recommendation. So it is specific to the scholarships. So that's going to show up under um, your dashboard after you complete the general application where it says um, complete follow up or complete extra work. Uh, it's and in those cases, they're very specific letters they're looking for. So if you qualify, then you would be asked to write to get those letters. Um, in one case, I, I mean, I can I'm pretty sure I can recall what they are. In one case, it is um, for an organization that assists military families. So the particular scholarship is looking for a uh, child of a military member, be it current or former, and they want a letter from someone that can um, support the impact of the military in the student's life. So you can see it's very specific. And then there's another one that wants, um, they actually want three letters of recommendation. So they're looking for a community member, a teacher, and I can't recall the third one, but you would only be asked for those letters if you met all of the other qualifications. And I know it seems like a lot of extra work to do, but do it because I'll be very honest, not every student takes the extra step. So you should. Next question. I'm a junior in high school graduating in 2025. Can I still complete the application? That would be um, a no. And the reason is because you don't qualify for anything for this year. Now, if you feel like just going through the application and maybe getting some practice and seeing what it's all about, by all means, go ahead. One of the first questions that it asks in, in the application is if you are a senior graduating in um, 2024. So uh, it's going to tell you at that point you do not qualify but you can still fill out the application. It just isn't going to get you anything. And we have a thank you. And from the information in my time, you are all most welcome. I'm happy to help you. And I don't have any other questions in the queue. So I'm going to start wrapping it up. And um, you have my contact information. Feel free to reach out. That's what I'm here for. And good luck. And I look forward to talking to you in the coming months and hopefully in the spring. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>